Hey, yo, I'm in a uh, teaching mood right now. Uh, let me go ahead and mute that. So let me just teach y'all a few chord shapes like this. Once you learn these shapes, I wish I'd have known these main shapes that just make everything sound saucy, saucy, saucy. And all of them are not bar chords, which is even, which is even better, right? And that's what makes these, you know, just gives that R&B vibe, right? I'm gonna be doing all of these in the key of G because everyone typically starts off in the key of G. It's, you know, the, the, people's, the people's key, right? So in the key of G. And these shapes, you can take these shapes in so many different parts of the neck. Once you learn them, and this is gonna open up the neck for you as far as R&B goes, I'm not a like legit expert teacher or anything. I'm just telling y'all what a dude who figured out some stuff on his own learned along the way. First one I'm going to teach you is this uh, this open G major seven. This major seven shape. I'm gonna talk about shapes because shapes can get you up and down the neck. All right, so we're gonna put our index finger on the third fret E string. We're gonna put our uh, index finger on the fourth fret D string and fourth fret uh, G string, yes, for the pinky. And then the middle finger is gonna go on the B string on the th on the third fret. You have this chord right here, it's a G major seven. Isn't it just a saucy shape right there? Remember that shape. It reminds me a lot about the, uh, the A minor shape. If you know the A minor, normally you probably start off playing like this with your index finger sort of leading the fingers there on the first fret. But learning how to play it like that will now open you up everywhere else here. So remember that shape there. You're going to take that up to the third fret and put the index finger on the G. Now you have a G major seven. And you just skip over that, uh, that A string. I said open major seven shape there. And the reason why I say you learn the shape, because even within the key of G, now you can take that same shape and you can go to a C major seven. You take that same shape all the way up to the eighth fret. Keep everything the same. Just Got a song already. And then you can just kind of mess around and see where it sounds cool in the other parts of the neck. You've, you'll open yourself up to see like, oh, wow, this actually creates some co sort of cool tension that I didn't expect before. Just kind of throwing it around the neck and figuring it out without even having to know much <laughs> music theory. All right, this next shape is going to be uh, the barred major seven shape. I'm going to show you right here. That sounds a lot like a chord we just played, right? This is C major seven. So you play a, a C major seven, you can also play it down here on the third fret. So I'm barring right here. I'm gonna not play the top E string. I'm gonna bar starting on the third fret on the A string. And then the ring finger goes on the fifth fret on the D string. And then the middle finger goes on the fourth fret on the, what is that? The G string, I'm trying to think. And then the pinky goes on the fifth fret B string. You can hammer on like that if you like. Use that pinky to move around. And you're gonna play all the strings down. That's a C major seven. Right, so now I can take that shape. And I can take it, say, way up here and play a G major seven. And the cool thing about that is that you're playing the exact, you can play the same chords that have a different voicing to give your song variety. So I can, you know, if I'm playing the G major seven down here the whole time, it makes it sound a little cooler now. The next time around, I may start up here. So say I'm doing this. C major seven. G major seven. C major seven. All right, now let's go G major seven. So same chords, just sounds a little different. So 
Those are two chords right there. Two really cool R&B chords. And now you can take that into any other genre. Uh, the cool thing about this one is you just move up and down the neck. You can even go right here. That tension you create with that. Right there on that sixth fret. All right. These are all my favorite chords. So if I ever do another tutorial, I just come back to this one. It's, it's probably going to show you right here. All right, so. All right, the next one I'm going to do is a, what I just did. Uh, let's see, I think it's a major nine chord. I'm going to correct it if I, I'm, I'm wrong later. But essentially, you're going to put this, we're starting our middle finger, not playing the top E string. We're going to start our middle finger on the A string on the seventh fret. Our index finger goes back here on the fifth fret on the D string. And then our index finger goes on the seventh fret G string. Pinky goes on seventh fret B string. Right? And I believe this is a, I'm gonna put it up here in the corner because I forget what the name of this chord is. It's just, I think it's like a, uh, E major nine chord, or E minor, some kind of E. <laughs> I know that much. I just be playing it, it feels good. Uh, I think the first time I picked around with this one was this uh, Say a Little Prayer. The moment I wake up. So you take that same shape right up here, take it all the way up to the 12th fret. So the middle finger starts on the 12th fret where the two dots are. Same shape. And the cool thing about this one is that I still kind of consider it the same shape, even though it's slightly different, is that once you pull that index finger up one fret, so keep everything the same, take that index finger one, now that same shape can go in other places, like down here on the, starting on the fifth fret, or even up here on the, this G9 right here, uh, on the uh, 10th fret, right? Listen, and I've just only, so far, I've only showed you essentially three shapes. And we got all this. We can play all this right now with just three shapes. That's not even a song. I'm just kind of messing around now. Right. All right, and then the other one I'm going to show y'all, really favorite chord here is that uh, minor seven chord shape right here. And so uh, remember how we played an A minor down here? Really, all essentially going to do is take that pinky off. So play an A minor down here without your index finger. So middle finger here. I'm sorry. Yeah, middle finger on the first fret, B string. And then you're going to take your uh, index finger and put it on the second fret D string. And then the pinky obviously would go right up underneath it. But for this major seven chord, I'm sorry, minor seven chord, we're not gonna put the pinky there. It's just two fingers. That is now an A minor seven. But if we add a bar to it now, we can take that shape anywhere else. So we're gonna slide it up to this starting right here, barring on the seventh fret. We now have an E minor seven right here. So see how these fingers are still the same there? And we're just barring here on the seventh fret. It leaves that pinky up there to, to do some little cool licks. Or you can do some hammer-ons with these two fingers. And now I can take that same shape and I can take it other places. Down on the fifth fret. Got that D minor seven. That for me has been a huge like just kind of building block. It's that B minor seven there. It's the same shape I was playing up here on the on the seventh fret. Take it down here to the second fret. All right. I got two more shapes to show you. This is like the whole gamut. I like for real. It's like the whole gamut. All right, so you're gonna bar right here 
on the fifth fret, barring all the way down, whole fifth fret. And then you're just gonna put your index finger right there on the ninth fret on the A string. And that's A minor seven, same as down here. Sounds a little different, sometimes a little better to play up here. You don't get as much of the strings kind of ringing out. You can really kind of really mute when you bar up here. Slide up to a B minor seven, E minor seven. Say, I already showed you. It's really the shapes, man. You can just kind of, and now you can take all those chords I just did. So, say I'm doing this. mess around with those chords and I want to do the same sort of sounds and I want to do it in the key of A now literally just take it up to the starting the G major 7 shape that's major 7 shape I showed you started up here on the 5th fret now we're in a different key Open it up. Uh, I, this is one I definitely play a lot. This dominant seven chord here, and essentially it's uh, it's just like the E minor seven shape I showed you, but you're literally just moving the the ring finger up one. I'm sorry, the middle finger up one, and the index finger up one, and then you're also barring the entire thing and play all the chords down. So this is a B dominant seven uh, chord right here. So the you're barring down the uh, seventh fret. Index finger goes on the kind of like how that this minor seven shape I just showed you. All you're doing is adding the middle finger to the uh, eighth fret on the G string. And with that same all those shapes I just showed you, I'm literally I can play officially missing you by Tamia. Raindrops. And I'm taking that minor seven shape I just showed you up here. I put it down here for F sharp minor seven. Falling on the rooftop. Man, I'm not singing in the right key right now. Got that B dominant seven chord there. Slide that same shape down two steps and then dominant seven shape chord again. Back to that barred major seven shape. It's so it's it's really there. And I know that was a lot, but this is just a cool like video you can go back and reference. It's like, yo, let me just nail like maybe each day, just like take one of these chords that I just showed you and just like work on that chord, maybe or take two chords and practice on just going from one shape to another shape. So I don't think it's really good to just practice one shape stagnantly. You're always chords are always either going into another chord or coming out of one. So it's good to practice that movement. And practice sliding it up. are all the same shapes man uh the last one i would i would do is a minor seven shape as well and it's very very similar to this one i just showed you right here this barred minor seven shape of this up here uh you would actually it's it's kind of a bar and a thumb over so i thumb over say so i take this thumb and put it here on the fifth fret e string and then i don't play the a string and then i bar all the other chord, uh strings with the index finger and then that frees you up to kind of do, so it sounds very similar to this. But the difference with that is, it leaves you up to kind of do some little cool little, leaves the other fingers up. it like so just work on those and then the big other biggest thing to make all this make sense was really really going to be helpful you need to learn all the notes on the guitar i'm still learning that like where they are on the actual fret i can name out where most of these notes actually what they are a lot of them are um maybe not off the fly but gun to my head i could the 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 thing the, the first thing that you really really want to get down it's just what these root notes are, these this, these two bass strings that you're playing up here, because that's gonna tell you essentially what 
the chord is. I know it by this. I know the chord what it is by the shape and its root note, right? It's so like I was saying, you know, this open G major seven shape, this major seven shape. I know it's a major seven because of this the shape. Now I know the music theorists out there are like, no, it's a major seven because it has seventh notes, does this and I get that. But I'm just saying for people who just want to know the shapes for now and be able to play something and have fun with it. Um, I learned that this is the shape for that. But how I know it's a G is because the root note is a G, right? So this top open is E, F, F sharp, G. So if I play the same shape, say down here where the F on the first fret, it's now F major seven. If I play with a root note as a B, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, it's a B major seven. Here's the cool part, because then now I know this next, this string down here now, we start with A, right? So A, A sharp, B, C, that's a C, right? So if I'm playing a barred major seven shape on the C, that means it's a C major seven. If I play in that major seven shape and the note, the root note is uh is <laughs> forgive me right now, A sharp. Then that's where we're at right there, right? So that means that that should sound just like here. If I play this open major seven shape and I use this as a root note up here on the top string. The interchangeable now. Just learning those two notes of what I just learning what that is up here, and that you'll understand why that chord um, is called what it is. And that's I guess that's a totally different topic, so I'm kind of rambling. But they are related. So once you learn these shapes and you learn the root notes, opens up a whole new world for you. A whole new world. A desolate place I never knew.